Ernestine Pinner is 101 years old. This is a woman who wants to live out her days in the home that she has owned for six decades. And now, thanks in part to volunteers at a local nonprofit, she can age in place. Sierra New Yorker shares this inspiring Indiana story. Mom, you got some good pictures here. For 65 years, this house here in the historic Martindale Brightwood neighborhood is the only home Miss Ernestine Pinner has known. And daughter Karen says she refuses to move out, even though she can no longer afford the home repairs. Just do what I can to make her comfortable. But after storms damaged the aging house, Karen says she found home repairs for good in 2021. I was at wit's end after I contacted the uh, insurance company and was unable to get any help. Mm -hmm. Then they were able to come in and help out. The nonprofit does free home repairs as long as applicants meet the requirements. Low income senior homeowners living in Marion County. Ernestine's a pillar in this community. What we're doing is something that is enabling someone to stay in their home that they love, that they own. Volunteers show up and complete projects like roof repairs, yard work, even fixing things inside the home. Last year, the organization served 440 homeowners. Crews have been out to Miss Ernestine's house at least eight times. Karen tells me this outreach for the elderly is a blessing. If this service wasn't available, what would you do? cry. <laughs> it had uh, just a lot of neglect over the years. and a storm. This weekend is the fourth annual Fall Fest where volunteers will clear out Miss Ernestine's backyard. These days she's a woman of a few words, but Miss Ernestine tells me she's grateful. It makes me feel good because because of them. Reporting on Indy's northeast side. I'm just overjoyed. Yeah, because everyone every now and then needs help. See a New Yorker, 13 News. A senior at Zionsville High School was recently recognized by local deputies for bravery during a wreck on I-70. The lessons that she learned in class played a big part in helping a family of five. As our Matthew Fultz shows us tonight, this is a story inspiring Indiana. The roars of I-70, known for 70 miles per hour speed, came to a halt just west of Richmond three months ago in July. We saw a car on the side of the road in a cornfield, actually, and there were a bunch of people lined up that were pulled over to help. Chloe Montague and her mom were traveling back from Ohio when they came upon a wreck and stopped to help. She explained to me that none of the family spoke any English. A family of five involved in a wreck, none of them able to speak English, and the first responders didn't speak Spanish. However, 17-year-old Chloe did. They asked me to ask what happened, how old most of the people were, and just what was going on. Chloe says she helped the parents and their three daughters stay calm, even riding to the hospital with some of the injured family members. And so they asked me to accompany one of the on-call doctors into each room and translate what was happening. She's a hero in my heart. Wayne County Sheriff Randy Redder calling Chloe's actions incredible. The fact that she was there uh, within minutes, um, that changed the entire outcome. A happy outcome that was honored at the beginning of Chloe's school year when Sheriff Redder and deputies recognized her in her Spanish class at Zionsville High School. I honestly think it was just a right person at the right time type of thing. The type of thing six years of Spanish classes prepared her for and now paints her as a hero. I feel like she was a hero to those little girls that were able to stay calm and know that everything's going to be okay and that the people that were there they might not understand them, but they're there to help. As for the family who Chloe helped, she has this message. Espero que estén son muchos años y muchas felicidades, pero no te deseo más de felicidad y amor para tu, tu familia. Y si quieren volver a verse a mí, quisiera mucho. Which in English is, I hope that you are super healthy and super happy. I wish you nothing but love and happiness for you and your family. And if there was any time you wanted to meet up and see me again, I would love to do so. Chloe Montague, Inspiring Indiana, One Day at a Time. Reporting in Indianapolis, I'm Matthew Foltz, 13 News. Way to go, Chloe. We're proud of you. Chloe plans to minor in Spanish in college, hoping to continue helping other people in the future.
Running one marathon in a year may be a goal for some people, but one Indianapolis man is halfway to his goal of running the world's six biggest marathons this year. His motivation is likely to inspire Indiana. For Chuck Myers, running has always been a passion. And this is something you can do your entire life. But now, running is his purpose. He's halfway through a challenging goal of running the six biggest marathons in the world in just one year. Six are uh, Tokyo, Boston, uh, London, Berlin, uh, Chicago, and New York. He's got the bibs, medals, and the pins from the first three. Tokyo was fantastic. Went, went really well. Uh, went and did, did the pace I was sort of expecting to do. Boston was a disaster. Um, the, uh, about two miles in, I had a uh, back spasm. And then that also led to a hamstring tightening up as well. London was six days later. Chuck is training for the Berlin Marathon later this month, followed by marathons in Chicago and New York City. Only 102 people have ever run the world's six biggest marathons in one year. But Chuck's doing it to raise money for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in memory of his brother-in-law and a longtime friend who both died from cancer. Matt was a, was a great guy. Um, like I said, I've known him since, since junior high. We ran together in high school. We ran tra track and cross country in high school. We ran together at Ball State. We ran track at Ball State. Every step he will run is in memory of Matt and Mark, wanting others to donate to his cause so the Lymphoma and Leukemia Society can find cures and ensure access to treatments for blood cancer patients. Chuck runs, not for himself, but for others. That's a journey inspiring Indiana. If you'd like to make a donation to help Chuck reach his financial goal, you can do so by finding the information on the web story on WTHR.com. Every year, a group of golfers tee off for a good cause in Morgan County. Tonight, Gina Glero shows us the main organizer inspiring Indiana in more ways than one. Boom. Kevin Lawler's passion is contagious. Today, it's on the golf course at Foxcliff Golf Club in Martinsville. If they believe you believe in what you're doing and you have a passion for it, they're more willing to be involved. And these golfers at his annual charity outing believe Lawler. Who would have ever thought 16 years ago that we'd still be doing this? But to understand how he got here, you have to go back to his early days. When I was 11, I was diagnosed with myelogenous leukemia. They told my parents if I lived three years, they would be extremely lucky. And I am extremely lucky. He's certainly making the most out of his luck. This is how my life started and I got busy into working with charity. I felt like I was here for a reason. Today, he and his wife, Robbie, give back to the Boys and Girls Club of Morgan County. And I said, we want to make a celebrity outing that's different than any other. Recognize some of these faces over the years? More than a million dollars from this outing have gone back to hundreds of local kids, providing programming and after-school care. And I apologize, but that's why I'm excited about what we do here every year. Even surviving prostate cancer later as an adult, because of the medication, he doesn't get around as easily. He never lets it hold him back. Every day I get up, I'm, I have this feeling that something good's happening no matter what. And if God lets me wake up, it's my job to make it the best day I can have. We can all learn something from Kevin Lawler. If you smile at people, if you say hello to them, it's amazing what a difference you can make because you never know what somebody's going through in their life. And that's why he's inspiring Indiana. Thousands of eighth graders from schools all across central Indiana are exploring future job opportunities, and they're doing so with these really unique hands-on experiences, and they're doing it with the pros. Yeah, Rich Knight takes us to the Junior Achievement Job Spark Career Expo out at the Indiana State Fair. So many eighth graders out there exploring their future with so many career possibilities, many jobs they may have never considered before now. 
Job Spark is all about sparking an interest in students so they get an idea of what they may want to pursue post high school. So thinking about that post secondary plan, it really starts happening in eighth grade before they get into high school when they pick electives and job shadows and think about what they want to do. From the medical field to technology to construction, the sky is the limit, literally, with this flight simulator. Each one of these little black spots is the beginning of a pig. Indiana pork producers use a pregnant pig to spark interest in their field. Maybe they just haven't thought about working in our industry, and so we're just here to just provide them the insights and what it would look like on a day-to-day, -day, what's the day in the life of a pig producer, and so that's exciting to see their interests light up. This event is designed for hands-on fun. No pressure to pick a career right away, but perhaps some inspiration is sparked. I think it's very inspiring, and I also think it's like very cool because, like, um, you know, it's like a lot of different opportunities for the new generation. A generation that will be looking for a job in as soon as five years. At the State Fairgrounds, Rich and I, 13 News. I just love this next story here. Okay? Let's get to it. An unprecedented donation is coming to the media school at IU Bloomington next week. A sports collection amassed over seven decades. And it's coming from a 93-year-old Hoosier. And as Jenny Runovich shows us, it is all for the love of the game. For any sports fan, this is almost hard to fathom. Just open several of those drawers and you'll see what I'm talking about. Name a memorable moment. Cassettes, CDs. And John Miley's got it. Spent most of my time on these drawers down here. Classic calls. Thrilling wins. And it's a home run for Joe DiMaggio. Historic games that still bring chills years later. <laughs> Miley's got them all. 105 yards. You don't have to go to the game, you're out, you're there. The legendary voices from the past are preserved here on a quiet street in Evansville, parked right inside Miley's garage. You see the garage is outside for my car. I, can, I can't move it in here. 44,000 pieces of audio and video dating back to the 1930s. The Miley collection includes nearly a century of sound, all cataloged on his home computer. Is that real? From Indy 500s and Kentucky Derbies to baseball, basketball, and football games. Soon, it'll become a permanent part of Indiana University. Miley is donating his life's work to the Sports Journalism Center at the IU Media School. Because I want to have a home for it that will, that will treat it the way I, th I think that it should be treated. Miley started collecting broadcasts as a high school kid. Asked Dad for a wire recorder for his radio. Let's see what this is. At age 93, he's still at it. Records games every night. Only the great ones make the cut. This doesn't exist hardly anywhere. Jerry Shipke goes in. Miley has had help. A team of fellow tapers all across the country send him games. He's even bartered and traded highlights with the networks. When you see Nolan Ryan's first strikeout, you can almost be assured that that was from my collection. And one particular broadcast is loved best of all. It would be the Cal Stanford game of 1982. The Stanford band was so sure that they'd won the game, they came on the field. The California announcer went absolutely berserk. How could it be more thrilling? How could it be more thrilling? After a lifetime of thrills, John Miley could have made money selling his collection. Instead, it needs to live past me. He chose to give to students at IU. They'll be able to access every bit of what I have uh, if they want to see what an announcer sounded like. We win! A treasure trove of sound and sport inspiring the next generation of broadcast legends. 54 to 53! In Evansville, Jenny Runovich, 13 News. Oh, thank wow. you, Jenny. Mm -hmm. The next generation of broadcast legends. <laughs> so IU plans to digitize the entire Miley collection over the next few years, and a ceremony dedicating this donation is set for next Monday in Bloomington. By the way, John Miley, through his recording and collecting, became good buddies with Bob Costas and Mark Cuban, 
both of whom gave their blessing for the donation to IU. Wow. Yeah, he's like, money does not matter. Yeah. That's not yeah. what we're gonna do here. We are going to let it live on and yeah. so everyone can benefit. Nearly from. a century of sound. Think about wow. all of those famous moments from yeah. baseball, all right there. Yeah, Very big inspiration cool. too for those students down no there. Kidding. And, and the folks of Bloomington as yeah. well. Forever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everyday law enforcement officers work to keep all of us safe. Tonight, our Karen Campbell shows us how one church in central Indiana is honoring officers and how they're inspiring Indiana. Dozens of IMPD officers showing up for roll call Friday on Indy's southeast side. But this isn't your ordinary roll call. We thank the Lord for those whose families. They gathered inside the Father's House off South Franklin Road for prayer, fellowship, food, and more. It's truly magnificent for the law enforcement community, and we're very grateful for that. This is the 16th year that Vicki and Dr. Chris Holland have held an IMPD roll call event, showing their appreciation for officers. Thank you. Thank you. There is no platform for this where they get to actually feel, see, and touch tangible support of smiling faces and warm handshakes. And love. Our heart was, dear God, if they, got, if they have to do this job, at least let's do something that encourages them so that they at least can reflect back on something good. In a world where officers are often met with violence. This church every week prays for them in their service and then every day the members of this church are praying for them. A day of the year they look forward to. And I think it's because they see the support from the community. Uh, they know that it's sincere. Um, and uh, it doesn't get much better than this. Officers able to fellowship with countless volunteers who took the day off of work to show their gratitude and to thank businesses for donating raffle prizes and gift bags. It's a great uh, symbol of unity within our community. It's really heartwarming for us, uh, and it's a great morale booster for the, for the officers that come out here and get to enjoy the fellowship. With community members who just wanted to say thank you to IMPD for helping keep them safe. Karen Campbell, 13 News. Basketball is an institution at IU, and it takes a team to make game days a success. And as Samantha Johnson tells us tonight, two members of that team now have a connection that is inspiring Indiana. Searching, searching. Good boy. At Indiana University. It's very physical for him, for sure. Indy is an explosives detection canine with IUPD. He works alongside his partner, Officer Searching. Rob Botts. Searching. Protecting Memorial Stadium and Assembly Hall. He knows I need to be looking in these specific places. But lately, Indy's workday starts inside. For him, we're using it mostly for in the healing mode. Back in December, Officer Botts noticed Indy wasn't jumping into the patrol car like usual and he was slower on the job. A vet determined the five-year-old had osteoarthritis in his shoulder and dysplasia in his elbow. The treatment? I wore the glasses to protect my eyes from the laser. A low-level light therapy that happens to be available in none other than the basketball training room with the same athletes Indy protects on game day. Obviously, it's not uh, uncommon for us to be in here getting treatment right next to our star basketball players, so it's kind of a neat situa situation. And Indy's care comes from a star athletic trainer who has cared for IU's best players for more than 40 years. We feed him to keep him still while I apply this therapy to his shoulder. At this point, Indy is coming in for treatment about once or twice a week. I've not seen a single limp. I've not seen any hesitation getting in and out of the car. That's it. That's his treatment. Oh, kisses, 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 kisses. Game day for us is 13 hours or so. That's why it's important for us to keep him as healthy as possible so that he's thinking about what he's doing, you know, rather than my shoulder hurts. Leave it. Uh, he benefits from some of the best care that a dog probably has ever had. So Search he's it. lucky. I just hope he understands it. it. In Bloomington, it. Samantha Johnson, 13 News. When a child has cancer, it is a family crisis. But when the community steps in, it really can make all the difference. How are you? Good. Good to see you. You too. You're so cute. Thank you. So much has changed since Miss Bass had cadence in fifth grade PE. I will tell you, like, Cadence, like, when in class, was always just that bright spirit. 
So when Ms. Bass learned of Cadence's leukemia diagnosis two years ago, she stepped in. It was just kind of placed on my heart, like, when I heard about it, that, hey, something, we got to do something. She promised she'd go bald if the school community raised $10,000 for the family. They did. And so she followed through, allowing Cadence to start the shave. And even dunk her afterwards. I love her so much. I like, I can't get over that she did that for me. Caden says the treatment was tough. A series of blood transfusions, spinal taps, and endless hospital stays. I feel like there's nothing that can really prepare you for it. It was the most challenging two years of my life. It affected the whole family. Cadence's little brother stood in for her at her fifth grade graduation. Cadence focused on getting well and just recently celebrating the end of treatment by ringing the bell and participating in the Miss Indy Juneteenth beauty pageant. I got second place, guys! I am just amazed by the fact that she does not look like what she's been through and she came back full throttle fighting. And in that time, Miss Bass Hair grew back too. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Um, it's just a small token of what she really went through and what she endured. Miss Bass got promoted. She's now the assistant AD at North Central, meaning this pair is going to reunite soon when Cadence is a freshman. And I was just like, you know, watching miracles happen right in front of your eyes. Yeah.